as the cliche that saying goes, you can see further through a, a, a tear than you can a telescope. Hey folks, we are up in the office with Danny and we're going to check in and see what he's been reading this week. All right, Danny, so what have you been uh, digging into lately? Well, I am just finishing a book by Molly Brown, whose parents teach at, um, at Sweetbriar, both of them, and both, both published. I mean, they've both written extensively, uh, both professors there. And so I just picked up her, this is, I wanna say is her second or third book. She did some poetry before, um, but it's Places I've Taken My Body. Okay. And it's a collection of 17 essays. Okay just poignant, just raw, honest. It's the most insightful book that I've read to date that gives me just keen insight into what it's like to have physical limitations. So were you first drawn to the book because of knowing her parents? And I mean, they're prominent writers and we've had their books here, um, or it's gotten a lot of critical reviews too. Is that how you first ran across this? Partly, but I also was listening to NPR about a year ago, coming down through Amherst County, which is where she was raised. I remember knowing about her because I had known the parents just a little bit, you know, the professor, just briefly, I'd spoken with him. And then, boom, when I heard the NPR review, oh my gosh, it, it, it's, it's so honest and so vulnerable and so filled with, um, you know, with at times grief and yearning and, you know, wanting to these, you know, wanting to escape her body and just all the emotions that come with physical limitations and wanting, for example, she's in Italy and knows very well where she can't go because they don't have ramps, you know, and how hard it is because she's just, insatiably curious so to come up upon a chapel or uh, you know a monument or whatever a church and to not be able to go to go in because of those limitations it's just it's just heart-wrenching mm -hmm. things that we take for granted you know so that she, she just simply can't do it she was born with cerebral palsy right is that right yeah okay what do you think really um pulls forward a an essayist into making it poignant and meaningful? Um, well, I think, I don't know if this is a, a good answer for that, but you know, as the cliche that saying goes, you can see further through a, a, a tear than you can a telescope. You know, I, I think grief, you know, when you come from a place of grief and heartache, mm -hmm. and, and, and in this case, in some cases, rage, you know, um, she lost her twin sister right after birth too. And that's another beautiful part of the book there too, where she, she feels her sister's presence. Um, so I think, you know, when you come from that deep emotion, I, and, and not only that, but she just, she cherishes language. I mean, she's grown up in a household, very a very literary household, you know, hearing and listening to poetry, reading poetry. So she's, I mean, that's, that's her world. And there's a beautiful quote here. Um, she says here, to help realize the world I want, I have to write, I have to talk. Language is my medium. It is the thing that has borne me up and out of every valley, the thing that has tied me to other people and made my life large. Often it's the only thing I really believe in. And so, yeah, I mean, using that language, um, in a real intimate, vulnerable way, you know, she allows us inside to know about that grief, that yearning, um, uh, missing her sister, and, and yearning to go places that she can't go. There's another really good quote here, too. Okay, you dig that, and I'm going to okay, go try to get to um, any novel that I've read, um, short stories or essays, you know, when you, I guess it's kind of the truism that when there's a universal through that personal story or that, that person's memoir or biography. And what struck me with her writing is her, she's writing so personally and digging in so, so deeply and, and so clear an articulation about interstates. Mm -hmm. um, 
that it helps me to move beyond how I take for granted how I interact in the world through my body. Mm -hmm. And while I don't have some of those limitations, what limitations do I have? Mm. You know, and, and so to, to, to travel through somebody who is so fundamentally exploring their, the, the world a different way mm -hmm. helps me to, to see what I've been taking for granted or, or the, the layer beneath how I, I uh, interact on a daily basis. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I also saw my own limitations, interestingly enough, you know, with just her ability to express something so simple. I realized, you know, just to sort of master the language, you know, I realized there are things that I've yearned to express, but haven't been able to find words for. She's been able to find words um, very beautifully to just what that grief means precisely. And, um, but again, it's very vulnerable too as well, you know, through relationships that she's had, to her you know, experiences with her parents, of the operations, that she had numerous operations mm -hmm. when she was young, so those painful occurrences. But um, at the end, I just wanted to sit down and talk with her, you know, about her travels too, and her experiences. And, um, but uh, let, me, let me read this one other part here too. I have come a long way to realize I've been trying to outrun grief I don't mean this as simply as it sounds. So rarely are our motivations only one thing or the other. I took this fellowship because it is a luxury, an honor, a remarkable opportunity. It, it also allowed me the gesture I know best, to tear myself away, to make myself alone. I would have told you once that the impulse for that tearing was born from a fear of being known, and there's a measure of that in it. I am coming to understand, though, that the thing I've been most hell-bent on avoiding is the scope of my own mourning the way it resists my knowledge of my luck, my certainty of the, val of the value of my own existence, my faith in every prayer I've ever offered up. To grieve feels disloyal to other people with disabilities. It feels selfish, regressive, and weak. I'm ashamed of it. What amazes me is, particularly that passage, is how profoundly timely this book is. Yeah. Um, yes, it's talking about uh, the human experience, but think about how we are asking our questions before we go out and are we wearing our masks or not? And mm. do I go here or there? Mm. And, and just this possibly constant reminder of vulnerability mm. um, and how do we either protect ourselves and do we do it emotionally, mm. physically, mm. Uh, but, but this idea that the world is to be navigated differently now, right? Mm. Mm. And besides some of the larger social issues going on right now. So I hadn't expected this to be so timely in addition mm. to, mm. you know, kind of a, a, a timeless classic. Mm. Gosh, you know, that's, that's a, I didn't think to weave that, that into this, but you're, you're exactly right. You know, that mask, you know what I mean? Both literally and figuratively. And I think anytime an author too can be honest and vulnerable, um, that, you know, it, it reaches me, I know, it resonates with me. And so that why, that's why it was particularly powerful to me too. And just, I just I felt she was, like I say, so, so honest in, in many ways. And um, anyhow, I would recommend it highly. And I'm absolutely gonna pick up her book of poetry right after, right after this, for sure. Thank you so much. Um, this sounds like a, a journey to, to savor and to lose yourself in also. Yeah.